p.m. on June the 8th, 2023, and we're going to begin our regular meetings of the L3 Fire Protection Board District uh, Board of Directors. And to get started, Adam, would you please lead us? In the yeah, too. If we, could, if we could all stand and face the flag. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Adam. I'll try to share the wealth a little bit. I know the directors have had that responsibility, but I think it would not hurt for the, everyone to participate. Good evening, everybody. Uh, we have called the board meeting to the order. And uh, we have a roll call of members. I see Director Newby, Director Woods, and Director Devaney. Um, absent excuse is Director Baker. She has um, things going on. One of the first things before we get started, um, I am going to apologize for the fact that the agenda was not out on Monday. This is a concern. The Chief and I have spoken about it at length. And we are going, we're not perfect. But we're going to do even better uh, next from here on out to ensure that our agenda is out on Monday, even if it is uh, shy of some issues. But we will promise to get you the agenda and the board pack it out as quick as we can. Hopefully, we'll have it the Monday prior to each Thursday meeting. Um, Chief in or Dom, anybody else want to say anything? I apologize to the public, that was not what was intended. All right, so as we move into item number four, additions and deletions uh, to the agenda, I would ask one, that if we add an old business, a special meeting topic. Any other additions or deletions to the agenda? Nothing. All right. Recording in progress. So, <clears throat> just to be clear, you want to add the, the discussion of the special discussion meeting in all this regarding what the special meeting that uh, we had worked on trying to schedule. Oh, I see. Okay. Would that be a strategic planning? Can we get that, that in there? We're supposed to have a report. Uh, this uh, this board, you, you, were, you took the action item to report back to the board and to the public regarding uh, where we stood uh, in regard to our strategic planning effort. Okay. Chief will we'll be able to address that. Okay. Perfect. We have that at. Okay. Are you are you adding that? Are you discussing that during your report, or would you like a separate? This the but why don't we get at it in your report? Yeah, and then we can get it in there. So. And the only other thing is I would like uh, permission to move item number 7.1 up to right underneath item number 4. Okay. Any other additions or deletions for the agenda? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to approve the agenda. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. Second. All right, all Second. in favor? Aye. All right. So that leads us to something that we like very, uh, we like to do. This is very important for us, the efforts of one of our members being recognized. Uh, I would actually like to invite a, a dear guest of ours, Steve Orr. Uh, there you go. I'm sorry, Steve. You switched up earlier. Would you please uh, come up here in the front and, and just kind of introduce yourself, discuss the reason why you're here on uh, this very special occasion. Should I be uh, addressing the board or the, yeah, the camera? address the public because you'll be okay, addressing very good. Well. Very good. Hi everyone, my name is Steve Orr and I am the training specialist of Fire Adapted Colorado. Fire Adapted Colorado or FACO is a statewide network of wildfire resilience professionals including <clears throat> fire departments, uh, wild uh, watershed collaboratives, um, county governments, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we are, I am here to recognize Captain Ben Yellen for his contributions to our field. 
Um, I'm going to read the actual letter and then I'll maybe make some personal comments. Um, Benjamin Yellen, Wildland Captain, Elk Creek Fire Rescue. Yeah. Dear Ben, Ben, it is with great pleasure that we award you a 2022 Faculty Member Award of recognition for excellence and mentorship. Uh, since joining, these facts are not uh, entirely accurate, bear with me. Um, since joining Elk Creek Fire Protection District, you have planned, organized, and implemented multiple effective and robust wildfire resilience efforts in the Elk Creek District and neighboring districts. You work tirelessly to increase wildfire resilience in one of the highest risk areas of the state and country. This includes leading a CWPP effort in collaboration with Inner Canyon Fire, the community creation of a community ambassador program, tactical pre-plans, the implementation of the state of the industry wildfire prepared home assessment program, and much more. Uh, you have been instrumental in the creation of the Connor for Wildlands Division. Uh, partnership, well, you know the partnership, which includes operations, training, and mitigation efforts. Um, you have also provided strong leadership in Jefferson County and regionally as a founding member of the Mountain Metro Wildfire Mitigation Council, active par participation in County Wildfire Task Force, the Upper South Flat Partnership, among other organizations. <clears throat> Getting there. You're a longtime faculty member and have eagerly and willingly shared your expertise with other faculty members. Recently, your team attended our Neighborhood Ambassador Workshop and provided the participants, participants with real-world real and practical experience that will have positive impacts across the state and beyond. We thank you for the quality of your work and your outstanding contributions to our network. And I'm just going to add on a personal note, I've known Ben for quite a few years, um, and these efforts definitely have not uh, been um, limited to uh, last year. When I worked with West Metro Fire, um, Ben was, has been working on these efforts for a long time and provided uh, that leadership. So I've known him for quite a few years, um, consider him a friend and mentor, and congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Get a picture. Ooh, here. <laughs> it's your award. Okay, which camera? I think both. Steve, thank you very much. You are um, very welcome. Appreciate it, Ben. Thank you for your efforts and uh, for those that live up here and those that really understand what you do, we, we cannot tell you how much we are endowed in your efforts. <coughs> thank you so much. Thanks, sir. Um, that moves us into item number five. We are going to review and approve the meeting minutes from May. Correct? Correct. If I may, Dr. Mr. Pixley, um, as we are all aware, Secretary Baker has some family issues going on, so I drafted these for her, so it's not her normal format, but it is the format I am <coughs> most versed in. Um, so, any additions, deletions, or corrections? Last time, additions, deletions, or corrections. All right, I'll entertain a motion to approve the May twenty three. Uh, 2023 regular meeting minutes. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And that takes us to item number six. <laughs> Director Wood. I'm going to go stand closer to the owl. Oh, I tried that last time. It didn't work. We'll try it this time. Do you have a copy of your PowerPoint? I do have a copy of my PowerPoint. I lost the internet, but I'm having trouble oh. posting your PowerPoint. Um, and I don't have a USB drive on my Mac. No, I can't get it. I have the PowerPoint. I can't get it on the screen. Oh. Oh. Right. Okay. 
So the the owl probably crashed then too. I have it on my iPhone, so I oh, have okay, cool. uh, medical what we have. But they crash in there, so so it's on the Zoom but not up here. I can put it on the Zoom. Okay. And share it on the Zoom, but I can't get it on the screen currently. Oh, okay. I have it. All right, so now I'll just stand up here and pretend that I can see the slide. We are on the Zoom, is that right? Recording in progress. There we go. It's kind of in and out right now. I do apologize for that. The eyes are there. They are. They are there. Do you want me to start? Do it right now. Okay, your PowerPoint's up. On oh, Zoom. On Zoom. Okay, the first slide that people on Zoom can see, that you all cannot see, is an overview of, overview of year to date revenue. Actually, year to date revenue is 2,581,040. This is a forecast of 2,445,005. The budget for the year is 5,387,681. So we're basically revenue is according to the forecast. Contributors to the overall revenue for property taxes at year to date 2.1 million. There was about a 300,000 increase over the previous month, which is, is good because normally we won't see increases like that. Uh, at this time of year. Ownership taxes are at 109,000, which is significantly over forecast. Year to date, 138,000 for ambulance transports. Again, that's looking good. Interest income is 110,000, which is again over budget because interest rates are pretty high. Okay, next slide. Over, overview of year to date expenses. The budget for year to date expenses is. Mm, like Never mind. May year to date, 2023 total expense was 1,793,509. I've adjusted that number for the billings to Hunter Canyon that we do on a monthly basis. Year to date budget is at 2,112,217. That means that we are currently overall under budget for expenses. In May, we are 42% out of the year and overall, overall expenses are 39 percent of the year so again we're under budget admin expenses are at a very are at a low of 34 percent of the total year-to-date forecast for admin this includes eighteen thousand dollars of expenses associated with the ongoing consolidation exploration process intended to give citizens the ability, the opportunity to vote on the actual consolidation of the three districts. The board does not make that decision. The voters do. The decision to move forward with putting consolidation on the November ballot was based on the overwhelmingly positive survey results for the survey done in November and December of 2022. The 18K includes the cost of the survey done for the residents, including the data analysis of that survey and the presentation that was put together by Magellan and Turnbull. The presentation can be found on the website if you would like to view it. It also includes posters prepared for the education ses <coughs> sessions, which all residents were encouraged to attend, and there were six of them, and ask questions. In addition to the sessions, the three fire chiefs, and they're not necessarily paid for this. We're talking and we'll continue to speak with various groups, including HOAs, Conifer Town Hall, and we'll talk with the Rotary Club of Conifer in the near future. 18,000 is much less than the 100K, 100,000, that was noted by an individual without direct knowledge of expenses here, and considerably less than the 30K, also noted by another individual. I want to make it clear that we are not spending $100,000 on the pre-consolidation process. Somewhere else to include legal fees of about 6 k Year-to-day expenses for adding, training, prevention, 
surf and maintenance were under the forecast. Next slide. This slide depicts net income 2022 compared to 2023 and compared to the net income budget for 2023. The net income budget for 2023 is 7,271. Net income for May 2022 was 828,020. These are year to date numbers that I'm reading off. Year to date adjusted net income, adjusted for the amounts that are billed to Inner Canyon, was 788,431. Next slide. The biggest contributor to revenue is the property tax revenue. Property tax revenue for 2023 is forecasted to be 3625336 for the year. The 2022 forecast was 3699153 The 2022 property tax revenue was 3693546 Basically, our revenue budget for 2023 is flat. Year-to-date, we already discussed this, year-to-date made property tax revenue is 2 million, 2.1 million, versus a forecast of 2.2 million. Revenue is still tracking as expected. Next slide is a visual, which I wish you could see, of property tax revenue on a monthly basis. What you can see is in March, there's a big spike when property taxes are paid, and then there's another spike in July. The spike in July <coughs> is smaller than the spike in March, but we are still expecting to see that spike. Year to date, revenue, year to date for the, I'm sorry, the month of May was 532,000 versus a budget of 511,000. So again, revenue is tracking relatively close to plan. Next slide. There's three slides on labor, and the labor numbers I have adjusted for the fillings to Inner Canyon. We bill them for fuel services, prevention services, and maintenance. So the first slide represents labor with the adjusted amounts. Continuing with a positive variance year to date, labor adjusted is 994,987 against a budget of 1,066,640. So we're on track, labor expenses are on track to meet forecast. Positive contributors to labor. Surf training, prevention, and maintenance were all under budget for year to date, the month of June. Next slide. The next slide represents budget for labor without surf and already adjusted. So if you look at this slide, the total labor budget is whatever it is. I can't read my, I can't read my slide, sorry. The total um, Forecast is 2,321,983, and that's net of surf. The adjusted labor amount net of surf is 987,161 versus a forecast of 982,160. Slightly over, but not alarmingly so. Next slide. This slide represents just surf labor. Surf is the labor that is expended when we actually assist in out of district fires. The total budget for labor for surf is 540142 We had no labor, no labor surf expenses in January, February, March, and now May. So year-to-date labor <coughs> for surf is 7826 So considerably less than budget. If you're looking at the slide, you can note that it looks like fire season is starting later than it did in 2022. Next slide. <clears throat> Next slide represents surf reimbursement. We did have two small fires in April, and the reimbursement due for those two is 21,902. No change from April because there were no additional um, fires in May. Year to date surf total expenses are 12,979. Again, below the budgeted amount, and it's a really pretty slide. Next slide. <laughs> it is a pretty slide. I like my slide. So, 
that leaves me with um, asking for a motion to approve the monthly expenses for May. The monthly expenses for May in the ledger were 257746 257786 746 746 Yes, sir. 746 The adjusted expenses for the IGA with Interkenyon are 240011 So I need a motion to approve the ledger recorded expenses of 257746 and the billing adjusted expenses of 240011 can we entertain a motion? Yes, sir. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Director Woods. Absolutely. Uh, Director Woods, what, what was your uh, number for consolidation spending? 18,000. For, for this month? No, none, none, zero for this month. The number I read off was the year to date number of 18,000. And uh, do you have a report uh, that states that? Yes, I do. It's called could the ledger. You, could you provide it to the board? It's called the ledger. It's in your packet. There's a ledger account for consolidation expenses. It is in your packet. I don't know the account number, but it's under admin. Could you point it out to me? Um, Does this have any relevance to the expenses of 257? Uh, I think so. Okay. So, so it is not, question. for clarification, it is not line item okay. so under total expenses. I think what Mr. Newby is asking for, if I may suggest, is a detailed summary of expenses yes. that are coded to that. I, with, uh, I can email it to you directly. Yeah, I would. Yeah, just a. Just a detailed listing of said expenses. Yes, please. Are you looking for who those expenses are directed to? Yes. Okay, so like the check register summary. Okay. I don't have that detail, but it doesn't have any. No, I think he's looking for point of information. Yes. Yeah. If she didn't spend. I will ask Barbara to send the journal entries to me. Oh yes, it's just the. In, in the context of pro presenting the budget. Okay, and I misunderstood you when yeah, I asked. No, no, not, not okay. relative to the motion at all. So we have a motion uh, to approve the expenses of 257 I don't know that you have an official motion. You have a request for motion, sir. Uh, um, okay. A request for motion. So moved. All right, and a second? I will second. All right. So All favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. <clears throat> All right, that leads us to Chief Ware's report. All right. So as uh, Director Woods pointed out, the last few years have brought increased fire danger to the district by this time. And the last few years, we've already had multiple fire assignments as well as local fires. This year, our wildland fire danger remains low due to the significant precipitation that's continued to materialize. Across the West, fire season has had a slow start in the U.S., the slowest in years. Well, we've been able to assist the local national forest on several incidents, we've not had any other assignments this season for Elk Creek. Um, for those of you who don't know, there have been a few records broken on the forest on Carpenter Peak with inches and inches of rain falling into the water. There's, there's been a lot of rain, obviously. It looks like Ireland outside. So our fire danger has stayed low, and there's a bunch of different models as to what it's going to become for the rest of the season, but much like the weather report, they're all just modeling. We don't know what that's going to look like. Uh, we have several job openings right now that we're seeking to fill. We have two line firefighter positions, as well as a PIO position. This PIO position is a 100% grant funded position through the Colorado State Forest Service for two years. It's going to be a shared position between Elk Creek, Inner Canyon, and North Fork. This position grew out of the outreach committee that Director Newby, and Director Wagner, <clears throat> as well as PIOs and myself, we all sat on and we talked about it. And one of the things that we got from almost everybody was our public outreach needs work. You know, we, I think we do a good job with it, but we also have as a collateral duty for one of the career firefighters as well as a volunteer with it. And that's a challenge. So we've been shopping around for grants and we got turned down on several and uh, Captain Yellen and Captain Mandel were successful for this PI, for this grant, which is pretty exciting. So we're actually flying this grant or flying the job out uh, nationally. And we've already had, I believe, nine applicants that are pretty qualified, so it's kind of exciting. We're going to see how that goes. 
Um, next bit is the community chipping program. It started and the fellows are ahead of schedule. So with the old truck, we could get approximately six to eight addresses into the old truck. The new truck, with it has nearly a 50% increase in capacity. They're getting 12 to 15 houses, addresses in there. And this, so to date, in the last few weeks, they've done 547 piles, 114 addresses have been chipped, and 210 cubic yards of material has been chipped, which is almost a record for those guys. I mean, they've, they've been getting after it. They've been working pretty hard trying to get out there early so they're not rained out. But uh, the new truck is making a huge difference, which, so thank you yes. for that from the board. Call volume. Um, Remain normal, a little bit lower than last year, 102 calls. Nothing really uh, outstanding. We have had a handful of high acuity motor vehicle accidents, you know, significant motor vehicle accidents. Uh, motorcycles are out, so we've had several of those, as well as uh, some high mechanism motor vehicle accidents on 285. We had 125 hours of volunteer staffing at stage one, Station 1, and we're still averaging under four people for calls. So we had three, 3.5 members for calls. And this is one of the lowest we've had in years, is 13% uh, of the calls overlap, so that's only 12 calls. Our average response time was 8.55, and that was just basically due to the uh, a lot of the calls on 285 and not to the outlying areas. Mutual aid, we received mutual aid six times, and transports were 38. We had 138 hours of training for the month. We also hosted an S212, which is a wildland fire chains operations class. We had students from several agencies attend that class. In prevention, um, Fire Marshal Parker and Deputy Fire Marshal Rush completed 43 inspections. Um, and uh, we touched on this. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Jeffco has announced Together Jeffco. It is a new plan over the next 18 to 24 months. It will include updating the community's comprehensive plan, transportation plan, community wildfire protection plan, creating a comprehensive emergency management plan, evacuation annex, and updating existing and creating new regulations to support policy and efficient processes. They've hired uh, Logan Simpson as a consulting firm who's going to coordinate together Jeffco with several sub-consultants. We don't really know what this is going to look like. Um, we're going to the first one. We got an invitation for one member from the fire department to attend the first meeting. We're just gonna have to kind of see how it shakes out. We do have we do have a quite a bit of involvement on the back end with it, um, with uh, our Captain Mandel and Captain Yellen sitting on the CWPP steering committee, which I think is going to be pretty important uh, to help guide that process. Um, and another change at the county, Hal Greve, the emergency manager, has left as well as the fire management officer, which that's going to be interesting to see. They're flying those jobs right now. Luckily, we have low fire danger and we haven't had any challenges yet but that's uh, another hiccup that the county is dealing with um we have and along the lines of fire prevention last month i brought up that we're going to be exploring <coughs> services uh between service agreements impact fees etc um, i have a sit down with the economic and planning systems incorporated they seem to be the company to do nexus studies most of the districts are size and utilize them for nexus studies um, I've got an appointment next week to sit down and talk with them. I'm hoping to have an RFP after that for what that's going to look like. I'd like to have that for the special meeting that we're going to talk about. I've also been in touch with uh, Phil Richard, the uh, uh, bike park developer. I wanted to ask him a handful of questions. I've been gathering, I'm trying to gather data about bike parks. And what I'm, the way I'm going about with, I'm trying to gather data from the EMS fire agencies that serve bike parks. I'm not really reaching out to the bike park managers. I'm trying to get data from all the run data from all those places, trying to get sound data and see what it's going to look like for us. Because what we're going to need to do if we have a services agreement, as we learned the last time, services agreements can have a lot of holes poked in them. And in working with uh, legal junk mail, that you know it has to be a, a legally vetted sound data set that we're basing any agreements off of. And for instance, a bicycle park is a challenge because there is no code, standard, anything like that we can fall back on. So we have to collect a lot of data to build that out. Uh, fleet <coughs> equipment. Um, ambulances are being prepped for the annual county inspection. It's a yearly process. It's part of our spring cleaning. It's just something normally we do. Um, one of the challenges we have right now is there's a number of uh, medicine shortages. And so there's all kinds of workarounds that we're working with the county to make that 
work for the inspection. Uh, we're also going to have a mechanics helper starting in the next few weeks to assist fleet manager Hojanowski. And we have stood up a engine and standard uh, engine standardization and design committee. It's being formed between Elk Creek Inner Canyon and North Fork. The goal is to have a new engine design and standard and hopefully ordered in 24. Um, we, uh, and I'll, I can touch on that with our strategic plan update, but uh, we desperately need to replace a 1998 engine and the goal is to have a new design set up and bids and a vendor selected by 24 and that was on 24th budget. Chief, we have a nice crowd here. Can you remind us of the differences in the cost of an engine for five years ago versus <laughs> currently um, and then the turnaround time? Of course. So the last engine we purchased was a 2015 E1 <clears throat> rescue pumper model. It is a, a what you call semi-custom truck. What that truck did was replace our <laughs> rescue truck as well as an engine. So it covered it carries all the tools for both of those jobs. It's a more efficient model. A lot of fire departments are doing it because between staffing and costs, unless you have endless money, like some larger metro district, metro departments, it's hard to staff a dedicated rescue truck as well as an engine. So by moving to that rescue pumper model, it, instead of having two trucks, you have one. That's what we bought, and I believe the cost on that was seven thirty-four, I think, right around there. For that truck, um, that same truck now, rough numbers from Pierce is a little over one. It's about 1.1, which is significant. Um, that is a huge price jump. Uh, so, Chief, that was 2015? Correct. Numbers? Yeah. yeah I think the, the actual model build number on the truck is 2014. It was delivered in 2015 and run right. service in 2015. And, yeah, so it was three-quarters of a million dollars. Eight years. And now it's north of a million dollars for that same truck. The other challenge with that is uh, not only the cost increase, the lead times on the trucks are, the last lead time I got was 36 months. Um, that's an it, it, That's what the vendors are telling us, and I've talked to several of the departments out there that are ordering trucks, and that's what they've all been told, and they're delivering in longer than that. Um, I don't really know what that's going to look like. What's t what's typical delivery right now? What it used to be when we ordered that last truck, it was twelve months, right around a year. So now it's we think it's still a year. Or no, thirty six. No, no, it's thirty six. Thirty six months. months yeah. they're pushing it out right. to, and that's almost everything in the fire service is like that. We have a we ordered hose last November that we still haven't received. Uh, we just talked to the vendor, and there's a shortage of internal liner material or something and so we sought out other vendors for hose and they've all told us the same story you know i, I don't know blame it on covid blame it on whatever it's, it's, it's a challenge to uh get this equipment these big ticket items it's i'm not sure what we're going to do with that but a 36 month lead time is a long time and there's it's endemic across all of the industries it is and there's also other points because a lot of uh, vendors are putting in their contracts cost adjustments, percentages, because if you pay 1.1 for this truck and it delivers in 36 months in the contract, a lot of times the prices are not fixed. So when it delivers, it may not be 1.1. Yeah. You'd be north of north of yeah, I was going to say, it, it could be north of that. I, I don't know. I mean, this is a brave new world. Nobody's really dealt with anything like this. Um, but that's what we're doing. we got a committee. We're working on that. We're going to see where it goes. Um, and last but not least, our facilities, we did have a uh, pretty successful spring cleaning operation. I don't know if anybody saw the uh, dumpster at Station 4, Captain Weinfeld organized one. We had career staff and volunteer staff. I think we had 16 or 17 people, and we did a massive cleanup of Station 3, Station 4, as well as Station 1, and the, it started at 8, and the dumpster was full by 10.30. Um, and we still have some more stuff, which is good. Uh, the other thing about facilities is hopefully Station 3 is going to get its makeover. We're working with the contract, the same one that did Station 4. We don't have it scheduled yet, but he's going to, we're going to redo the siding on it and paint the doors and actually make it look a bit more presentable. Uh, strategic plan update. We, uh, we had our strategic planning meeting, and the two things that came out of that was uh, our standards of cover document. I've been working with Captain Yellen as well as Farm Marshal Parker. Farm Marshal Parker started it several years ago, 
and we've run into some of the hiccups to really get detailed population information. Unincorporated Dirksen County is is an odd place to get really finite population information. So that's been one of the hiccups that we're working on. Other than that, we're still working on the rest of the document. The goal is to have that completed and delivered to the board by the third quarter of this year, so November, October-ish. We're, we're going to have that and I'll present that to the board. And the last bit was the uh, apparatus replacement plan. We have internal documents for apparatus replacement plan. They're just very complicated spreadsheets. Um, I'm working on a narrative right now that incorporate LDMPA standards for apparatus. Um, right now, our replacement plan, is, plan is, it's relatively boring. We only have three apparatus that are in need of replacement right now. Um, we have 1998, the one we're talking about is uh, older engine. I think now it's the newest issue is a turbo has seals going out in it. Um, and in fleet manager hood, Janowski's not sure if he can even get parts for it. It took us six weeks to get parts for a fuel pump the last time it was down. Um, but that's the main apparatus that we need to replace. The second one after that is a 2004 Schmiel. It's a type one engine. Um, NFPA recommends after 15 years, everything should be taken offline. It should be taken out of front line status and it should be moved to reserve status for the last five years and at 20 years after it should be retired. We push that a little bit longer. Um, we shouldn't, but financially that's just what we do. Hopefully next year we'll be replacing those rigs. Uh, and then we have one ambulance that needs to be replaced immediately. I can share with the board our spreadsheets, but yet again, they're just very complicated, long spreadsheets with boxes and axes. Uh, the next board meeting, I'll have a forward-facing narrative that we'll be able to place on the website to talk about our fleet as well as all of the apparatus replacement plan. And what is the uh, year of that ambulance that we want to replace? Uh, that would be a 2009. And is that the one that uh, is running sometimes? But Ish. Yes. Ish. It's, it's, it, it, it runs. Um, it was involved in a moderately serious accident. We had about $36,000 worth of damage done to it. Um, unfortunately, due to the price of ambulances, it, it didn't to insurance didn't total it. Um, it we rotate tires about every 5,000 miles on it. Um, it goes through ball joints and a number of other things. We have it, it's down at station four. It's not quite a reserve, it's still in service. It is, it is functional, we say it runs ish. No, it is functional, it is dependable. It is not the most comfortable to drive in and it is, in dire need of replacement. We actually have a grant out right now with RETAC. That was the grant that we put in for this year to get the replacement ambulance. So to replace that, the cost is going to be what? Quarter million? 300. 300,000. Yeah. yeah. For an ambulance. Yeah. For essentially a chassis with a box on the back. Um, ambulance costs have been going up. Uh, I believe the last one we purchased was two, I think it was 230 ish. And that was a couple years ago. Uh, we've explored other options. We have tried rechassing an ambulance, which was it was an experiment. It wasn't the best experiment. Uh, we were able to save money on it. it we spent about one hundred and forty thousand dollars on it by rechassing a box from two thousand nine on a modern chassis. And unfortunately, the boxes are so old. We have corrosion issues, and it it was an experiment. We saved money, but it wasn't a good experiment. We're probably not going to do that again. Okay. Anything else, Chief? Uh, anything no. for the Chief? Board members? All right. Um, yeah, actually, if I may, let's do it. Um, Thanks, um, I would personally like to thank um, Jesse for <coughs> coordinating all of the hard work that everybody put into the cleanup. I know that that took off took a hand and thank you to all of the staff and volunteers and recruits that participated in that. It's nice to see those, the attention paid to those. It was good because it ran across the board from rookies to old volunteers to new volunteers to career staff to everybody and everybody worked really well. And team it, opportunity. Thank you very and much. And it was done by lunch, which is even better. Did they get lunch? Of course. Uh, we didn't throw away all the Christmas decorations, did we? Because Heather was involved. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I just live with the guy who drives Big Bird, so <laughs> drove Big Bird. Don't you remember last year that was during the fuel pump? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I do. I don't know if it'll work this year either. Yeah, don't tell them. Yeah, 
please. Okay, that will move us into public comment number one. Um, Adam, would you do me a favor and grab the clipboard of the signing sheet for the first public comment? <clears throat> And to remind those that weren't here last month, we've created a new policy. Public comment will take place at two separate times of the meeting. Would one you like the second as well? Beg your pardon? Would you like the second as well, or is that? Uh, I think we're going to give people an opportunity to sign it up to the very end, so the second one you can leave that on the table, okay. but the first one for sure. Uh, but the public comment will allow as many people that uh, up to 10 within a 30 minute time frame to speak for three minutes apiece. This is standard practice and has been um, has shown to be successful last month. So we will start with uh, Mr. Olson. Okay. If you would like to step up and introduce yourself, sir. Again, I'm Paul Olson. Just a reminder, Mr. Olson, you have three minutes. Okay, that's fine. I'd like to comment on the consolidation and say you're putting a bunch of money into infrastructure and you're going to indebt us for quite a number of years afterwards. And I'd like to encourage you to take a look at the location of the stations relative to what's served. I drive by station four pretty regularly, and if that bike park goes in, getting from four to the bike park's not nice. And maybe some better locations, um, and maybe looking at the Dr. Cog regional traffic model to figure out, well, is that the centroid of the people we have to service? Is that the centroid the best place for servicing the demand. I mean, like here, you've got a, a interchange, great separated interchange here. At Station 4, you really don't. And you might think about that. Okay. Any comments? Chief, Chief took notes down. I saw him writing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Olson. All right. And then that brings us to uh, Chris, forgive me. Well, I LA UBIS kind of scratched it in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome. Um, I'm sorry I missed the very first few minutes, so I may re be repeating myself for some of the things you've started with. My interest is in talking about communication. Um, it, it's kind of astounding to me that, uh, and maybe you did discuss this, that I look for the minutes for the on the website, and the last minutes that were posted were in March. I believe there's nothing for April and May. And so I was wondering if there if that could be speeded up and if also that it could be placed in a place where more people could see it, perhaps in the newspaper, or I don't know if that's possible or if that's an item that you might be considering. Um, some people are <laughs> I haven't had internet very consistently for two weeks and um, CenturyLink is really backed up. So um, some of these issues, you know, are not just age related with technology, but they're also related with the real nature of our community. So um, I also never heard, and I think you might have discussed maybe when you're going to have a special meeting regarding the, the four different um, options you might do for in, in future developments. You might have four different. What's I? Can you tell me the words? Options. Options. Yes. And I don't know when that meeting is scheduled or if it has been already. It is not. Okay. We will. We will announce it. Anyway. And um, I'm just thinking about in 1948 when uh, Abdullah Lewis was unable to be saved, and the the Long Road, the Longs family pioneers, they started the fire department, and Rudy and May Long. <laughs> You know, it's just such a small community, um, and there, people depended on each other, and they knew about what was going on in the community. And I learned a little bit, and it just seems to me that I like to learn more, because this is the only thing that I get to vote for in unincorporated Jefferson County, is this board here. And that's important, and people don't understand, and they should know more that that's what we have a voice in, and I'd like to, that to be known by more people as well. And then, these are, I, these are just questions that I have. You talked about the replacement of apparatus, and I'm wondering, sir, if that has to do with the miles that the apparatus is used for, or if it's just, you know, the age. 
Uh, so it seems to me if you don't have as many calls as like Denver does or a big metropolitan area, that you could extend the life to the apparatus because it doesn't see as many miles? That would be my question to you. And um, let me see. Oh, how long will it take you to get that data from the specific EMS uh, facilities, departments, in the bike, in different bike parks? And so that would be something that you'd be presenting, I think, during the special meeting. And I was wondering how soon that meeting might take place. And then also, it seems to me that uh, Elk Creek and Intercanyon, especially with their websites, consider consolidation a done deal. It seems like the, when you gave your programs at the different fire stations that you didn't show the downside of consolidation, like we would be losing our voice. If there's only five to seven board members, Elk Creek would lose our voice, and we have the biggest population. Lavis, you've gone over time. I okay, will I'm give very you sorry. I will give you no, 10 no. seconds to wrap up. No, that's it. Thank you very much. Okay. Sorry, I was over time. Thank you. Um, in addition to those two public speakers, we have um, four letters um, from <coughs> citizens Ford, Murphy, Lewis, and Wynan, and Director Devaney would have volunteered to read those for the... Um, that was before there was an audience that changed my mind. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm Lewis. Can I, I can just speak to my letter. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm so sorry. That's okay. I am more than happy to. Would you like to? Why do you want to start? <clears throat> we have to walk all the way over here. I know. There's <laughs> every step. Um, John Lewis, resident for 25 years. And a little add on to my letter, I just finished a meeting with the developer for the bike ranch, so I have a little news for Chief Ware that I'd like to bring up. But my concern is, and Chris brought it up about the meeting, public meeting regarding consolidation or the bike park, and I, I'm informed that it's going to be a web-based meeting only, and that there's not going to be in-person um, encounters. My concern about that is your actual Zoom capabilities. I, could not come to the meeting last month, so I joined on Zoom. The only person I could hear is is Chief Ware. So you guys got to improve the sound system if you want to do a Zoom meeting. I think that's very unfair to participants. Um, they can't hear anybody talk. Um, in regards to the bike park, I uh, in my part of my conversation this afternoon, Chief, was to tell you what their plans are exactly for having on-site EMS so that somehow you guys could work together and understand exactly what your part of that would be. That's really important to us. Okay. okay. And I think they heard me loud and clear, okay. among other things, that that's a big deal. Um, so hopefully they'll, you guys will be able to okay. work together to come up with a plan. I told them we need to see their plan. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ross. All right, well, that saved you a little bit. This was the shortest. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll make mine easier, too. I'll go. <clears throat> um, oh, you are Barbara Moss Murphy. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> I'll, um, I'll be brief. I just wanted to, um, last time on the Zoom again, like John said, the only person I was able to hear was you, Chief Ware, on the Zoom. And we greatly appreciate it as a community because we felt heard. The bike park, um, many of us, the proposed bike park, have been working on it for two and a half years to be heard and for our concerns about EMS and traffic and, and the environment. And you really seem to say, I know I'm ready to look at this as a community, and we greatly appreciated that. And my only thing was what John said. We want to be heard, and when we're heard, and we go to the place where we're heard, and we, the only person, we very important, but we only could hear you, um, I would ask that then we please be um, live, too, because that makes us feel as a community that you really do want to hear from us versus a system where we can't be heard or we can't hear you. 
So that's my only thing. Thank you. Thank you. If I may speak to that, the Zoom is a live presentation. You were able to log in actively. And in defense, I don't think there was much speaking from the board as a whole. Well, Mr. Camille and the chief. Well, we couldn't. We couldn't hear anything yeah. so, that Chuck Newby said. In fact, the chief okay. and I spoke of that after we read yours, both your emails, and um, we have a plan in place about trying to, uh, which we will bring to the board, of course, about trying to increase the sound system. And I know we're not supposed to comment on it, but if it's an issue, the chief and I agree that we need to address it. Thank you. So that would take us to, um, who did we have? That was uh, Mr. Or, uh, Mur uh, Murphy. I don't know if it's Mr. or Ms. Seaman. So that leaves me with Debbie Ford and Joe Winan. So Debbie okay. Ford came in on June 5th. Ray, a policy for proposed development scenarios and the assessment of fees in person attendance for the upcoming meetings slash meetings. I attended the Elk Creek Fire Protection District meeting by Zoom on May 11th. During that meeting, I couldn't clearly hear all of the board members and speakers. I believe an in-person community meeting should be made available for any ECFPD meeting to best in provide in-person comment, education, and transparency. During the meeting on May 11th, it was determined that a work session will be planned to discuss how ECFD would create policy guidelines and protocols to determine potential fees for new developments, including residential, commercial, or on public lands. The logic behind Chief Ware's presentation was to have a policy in place that would fit all proposed development scenarios. He further discussed three methods to assess fees. On this topic, the goal is to be able to find an equitable method to not increase fees to residential homeowners for new developments, especially when developments are commercial for-profit ventures, provide a mechanism to charge for profit developers with the increased fee associated with EMS and fire protection fees, determine if current residents can still be accommodated at the same level and within the same response time with the addition of new developments, fire evacuation of residents and commercial entities should be evaluated to determine the safety for all concerned. I would like this letter to be shared at the next board meeting on June 8th. I look forward to hearing from you and appreciate your commitment to providing critical services for our community. And then on June 8th from Joe Winan, Dear Chief Ware and ECFPD Board, this letter concerns your initiative to develop methods for assessing fees to developments that do not pay mill levy taxes. This is particularly re relevant to the sh potential Shadow Mountain bike park development and their exp expected use of emergency medical services. Underline, I, so I'm trying to get effect here. I applaud the district for arranging a meeting to develop the appropriate method to assess these fees. A public in-person meeting would be preferable to a Zoom meeting as there have been difficulties with Zoom connections in our mountain area for citizens viewing ECFD, ECFPD board events in the past. If possible, holding the meeting in person at the district headquarters would be preferable. Sincerely, Joe White. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> that takes us to old business. Only one issue we uh, addressed with Director Newby's strategic plan that Chief gave that in his report. Um, do I need to read this, Director Newby, to see what just sent? Is it, am I supposed to read this email you just sent? Uh, no, that's that's to Melissa. Okay. Okay. Um, I beg your pardon. Uh, but the special meeting, the special meeting, the comments running the special meeting have been heard. The intent for a Zoom meeting for the special meeting was nothing more than convenience for the board directors to get together. Having the opportunity to have a Zoom meeting gave the board directors the opportunity to perhaps uh, participate downtown or in their home or if they weren't feeling well. Uh, regardless, we found after discussions with the chief that we didn't have enough information yet. And the chief is working diligently to try to get that information in terms of the Nexus study so we can have appropriate information when we pursue the, this special meeting. 
and by all likelihood it will be in person. We apologize for the fact that there, might, there are technical issues with the um, with our owl, but um, on uh, we haven't had very many issues until as of late. Again, apologies with the inability for people online, if you're online right now, to hear, and uh, also for the the uh, internet connection that might be an issue here in the firehouse as well. But as was mentioned, anytime we have an in-person meeting, we always appreciate people being here. And uh, we will schedule our, our next special meeting as soon as we get the information, and by all likelihood it will be in-person. That is the only item under old business, which takes us into new business. Um, the first item is the Elevation Celebration Safety Fair. That's fine. Um, so, years ago, like back when I was younger and Jake was, Jake was just an EMT, <laughs> we, um, we used to have as a dis uh, department a safety fair. It was an excellent opportunity for the district, its, st its recruits, its volunteers, its staff to be present in the community. It serviced everything from 911 education for children. Um, we had role play with them to teach them how to how to talk to a 911 operator, how to dial 911. Um, we would bring up a smokehouse. We had an extrication challenge um, between the different departments. Um, Inner Canyon and Elk Creek were pretty consistent, <laughs> um, and it provided a community engagement opportunity. In sitting with um, members from the Elevation Celebration Committee, they are looking to give Elk Creek an opportunity to return to that level of engagement um, at the celebration. Um, I think I am, I am requesting that Chief Ware and the staff look at um, the possibility to participate in the Elevation Celebration as um, kind of an anchor point. They would give you your own little section. I am happy to volunteer and help with all of that, but it does not happen without the chief and its team behind it. So I am personally requesting that, to, that the chief look into participating. I, I think it's an excellent opportunity for us to start on a re-engagement with the community and be, be more present at those events for all of our community members. So, Director Bay, uh, are you, is, is your concept to <clears throat> combine the uh, safety fair with the uh, mm -hmm. animation as, as, as a whole or as a... Yeah, as, as, a, uh, as, a fee, as an event. Yeah. So a lot of what we had at the time, it was a single point event where there, it was just fire related. So it didn't draw a lot of attention, but with Elevation Celebration, that is a community-wide event. There are tons of people for, throughout the corridor that will be present, enabling us to reach more people. I know um, Captain Weinfeld has expressed interest in a smoke detector program. I know a lot of the volunteers go into the schools for fire awareness with the, with the different schools during those weeks. But this provides us with an opportunity to be present for our community and allow them to engage as well. And because we've got really cool toys. And so during the, during the chili cook-off, we have this, the kids' version of the, the challenge. They love that. Um, so I would request that we look at doing that, participating in that. And we get a whole session. Done. Done. Fantastic. <clears throat> Is there a cost? Other than time, most of what we do, we already have, to my knowledge, and Chief Ware can clarify for me, the Kids Challenge, we already have all of this stuff for. Um, we have paraphernalia and goods. What we did with the 911 was photocopies of a little script, coloring books, which are minimal, and I, I will purchase directly. Um, for the district if we don't have funds to set aside for 
public education campaign, which I'm pretty sure we, we do. We do. Yeah, all that. Um, and volunteers. I spent an hour at the little 911 booth making phone calls with with kindergartners. They come up with some crazy emergencies. But it gives them an opportunity to talk through and and learn their address and all those cool points of data that little kids need to know. If you ask ask 10 kindergartners if they know their address, most of them don't. But that becomes a very critical piece of information, especially in the age of cell phones when address location services are not necessarily 100%. So. Yeah, so there's, there's not really a cost of it. When we used to do it in the past, I mean, some were more involved than others. Remember when we used to build the firehouses and we demonstrate the fire with sprinklers and not, we burn a bunch of stuff. Yeah, that was not, that, that was pretty labor intensive. Fire. Probably not going to do that one. Um, but yeah, it, there's there's not a lot of cost with it. It's, it's more just time and effort yeah. to go into it. Um, Long Brothers was always great about giving us squished cars to destroy, and that actually was a lot of fun the to problem. get to see the jaws of life in action without somebody's life hanging in the balance. And Very I think few people donate cool. cars anymore because they're worth a lot of money. Everybody fixes them. It, getting cars donated is a lot more problematic sure. nowadays. Um, but yeah, we will. Think, I'll, I'll start organizing. I think there's a VW bug in our backyard. You're <laughs> <laughs> waiting to get rid of it, right? <laughs> Kidding, Jake. <Jake. laughs> anyway, just a joke. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I will be happy. Yeah, we'll make it work. Um, and yeah, it, it just it's, I think it's a great plan. I think it's a great idea. If, if they can actually allocate some space, we'll yep. come up with some different pieces there. We've done bicycle helmets. We've done yeah. all kinds of things. Yeah. Drive Smart. Yep. Typically, we've had Drive Smart participate in the bicycle helmets, the um, child seat installation. Uh, I don't know how many firefighters you have trained on that. My cert is long since expired. We're trying to get more. The car seat installation is challenging. It's a forty-hour class as well as CEs every year to maintain the yeah. cert. Um, <coughs> we're actually trying to get somebody in through that now. But yeah, I, I think it's a great idea. We'll come up with a list. We'll build a committee out, and I'll be able yeah. to report back the next meeting. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Director Germany. That takes us to board procedures, and that is uh, Director Newby. Yeah. Basically, I just wanted to have some, put out some information, have a, uh, a bit of uh, some some comments here, and a, and a bit of a discussion. Um, given some of the changes that we've had, and we're that are coming down the line, given the district. Uh, there's there's uh, been quite a bit made of Robert's Rules lately. And I'd just like to call attention to the board members and to the public, too, that uh, our bylaws do not actually call for Robert's Rules as our rules uh, of procedure. No, actually, they do, and you reference it here. Well, they don't actually. So what, what it says, what, what our bylaws actually say in, in section 4.8 procedure says, in the absence of a rule governing uh, a, a point of procedure, the rule of procedure set forth in the most recent edition of the Roberts Rules of Order shall govern. So they're permissive, but they're not direct, but, but that's not directed. So, Director Newby, can you state what rule governing point of procedure we have? We don't have rules. That, that's the whole And point. since we don't have, in the absence of a rule governing a point of procedure, the, set forth the most recent edition of Robert Rule Show Governor. Yeah. And as a president, that is the reason why I but, refer to but, Robert's But rule. the way is, I understand why you referenced it. But the point is here that we do not have procedures. So uh, we could have a set of procedures that govern uh, our board meetings, but we do not have. So what our bylaws cover is a case-by-case -case basis. It's not a blanket coverage. It's permissive, but it's not directed. So that's point number one. Well, I would, I would disagree. Well, that. disagree if you will, but it's right there in the bylaws. Yes, exactly. It's right yeah. there that 
Robert's rules is no. what we will follow because we don't have a no, rule of government. It doesn't really to. say that. It doesn't really say that. I, I respectfully right. disagree. We um, disagree. Likewise. We disagree. Next issue. Uh, the next next issue is um, uh, again in our bylaws section um, 4.7 talks about how board members cast the votes and how votes are recorded. So reading out of section 4.7 regular meetings, it says the secretary of the board shall maintain in the district's record, written minutes of all of the proceedings of the board and all committees thereof, and shall indicate the presence or absence of each member of the board and a record of the vote or a failure or abstention to vote of each member of the board on every motion. <clears throat> so we don't obey our own bylaws right now because we don't record each board member's vote we should be doing it but we don't uh, and additionally if we wish to follow robert's rules of order uh, on this point um, Robert's Rules tells us that a small organa organization such as ours, the chairperson or the presiding officer, the president in, in our case, votes on all motions. And uh, this comes right out of Robert's Rules, which is very complicated, very thick. Uh, but if you go to the website, it says exactly that. So this notion of, uh, in a small board, the presiding officer not voting is specious. Lastly, um, I, I would recommend that uh, we, we talked about having our uh, board packet and agenda out on Monday before the meeting. I, I uh, think that we should have it out more, uh, um, more quickly than that. I'm advocating that for all business of the board, and we can define what business is, but in my mind that would be major policy uh, directives or decisions or uh, motions to change major policies. <clears throat> that we put out those uh, motions uh, at least 21 days before they are to be voted at on at a board meeting. And that then 14 days before the board meeting, uh, we put that in the board packet out to the public so the public understands exactly what business is coming before the board. And so that if members of the public wish to comment on motions that will come before the board, or in other words, board business, uh, that they have a chance to comment. And then we go through our regular procedure. The idea here is that we should be forward looking in all of the business that we are conducting here. And in so doing, backing the calendar up, instead of having surprise motions that are uh, we are essentially reading as we're preparing to vote on them this my recommendations are that we back everything up at least 21 days and uh, so that uh, directors know what what they're voting on or what they're going to be asked to vote on or consider uh, and that the public has uh, adequate notice as well so uh, that's essentially, uh, uh, and lastly, one other thing, and that is to uh, note that our uh, bylaws were written and adopted in 2018, and they're way out of date, so we need to really get on updating them right away. Anything else, Mr. That's it. May I comment? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, while I agree with you that we need to be way more um, attentive to putting out a board packet 
sooner. Um, I discussed it with Jake and with President Pixley. My concerns about the timing. I don't like getting my board packet three hours before the meeting. I don't think that that puts us in a strong position. Um, I think that there can be a much better compromise by setting your dates 21 days and 14 days. We are very react. We are very reactive and not proactive, in my opinion. I I personally would like to see them out a week prior. I think that gives everybody time to review. We know it's coming, but when you set a date of 21 days or 14 days, anything that happens in those subsequent in that subsequent time frame, which Director Newby, as you are well aware, things move quickly, especially in special districts and the fire service industry, um, I don't think, I think that that will put us in a much more reactive than proactive position. I think a week, seven days, and if there needs to be amendments that those are made on Monday, I think that that's a goal to strive for. Um, having worked for special districts for a decade now, keeping in mind the limited administrative resources and the extraneous activities that are that go on the board's behalf because while we receive a stipend for this role let's be honest I my hours per per pay really go down so I'm not in it none of us are in it for the finances of the position so I think by striking a balance between 21 days and three hours I think would be much more appropriate let me, let me uh, comment on that, and uh, uh, 20, 21 days is, is not hard and fast, but typically, typically what I've seen uh, for special district boards is that they have an agenda out uh, two weeks before, or they endeavor to do that. They I would be curious which special district that is. <laughs> I, work, well, I work with hundreds well, of special districts. I, I, I've, I've talked to a number. In doing my research, I didn't just pull these mm -hmm. numbers out of the air. I, I talked to people, and um, uh, most of the special district secretaries um, uh, and, and administrators endeavor to get their agenda out uh, to, uh, at least 14 days before the board meeting. They don't always do it, but that's that's their goal. And yes, it's true that every that the agenda is not fully built out, and there are always things coming in at the last minute. But you know, if we don't set uh, goals, we'll, we'll never achieve anything. So uh, my my put here is to get us thinking about how we can do a lot better than we've done in the past. Absolutely. Uh, so whether it's 21 days or 14 days or 10 days, and there are always outs for exigencies. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always going to be something coming in at the last minute, and then we'll just deal with it. But what I would like to see is that we, as a board, set something like this, backing up at least a couple of weeks in my mind, so that. When a motion, when business comes before us, we have a, uh, that, that number one, that all business is conducted in the form, and when I say business, I mean purchasing over $25,000, new mm -hmm. policy, other major things like that, uh, that, that, that public business uh, is is put in in the form of a formal motion. Doesn't have to be perfect, and it, it mm -hmm. can be in flux. But that that's presented to us so that we can consider it. Maybe do a little research, a little question Q and A, mm -hmm. so that we understand what is coming at us. No, I completely agree. And with that, you, you know, if if we believe that. Something needs to be added, subtracted, changed. We have some time to think about it and actually do that and converse amongst ourselves. And that way we can better serve the public. And we can do a better job for the public and also 
uh, for the stakeholders in the you know in, within in, internally as well. Mm -hmm. So that's the goal here. No, I completely agree with you that we can do better and we can be more proactive in the process. I mean, fundamentally, you could argue that we could post this standardized agenda minus the insets of under the subcomments. This is pretty much the standard agenda. So fundamentally, you could put that out for the rest of the year and say this is the agenda that we follow and then add to it from there. Um, but I would, I would like to cycle back again to the, there is nobody within the district or on the board that is specifically dedicated to managing the board, <laughs> to providing us. No, exactly. It's a group effort exactly. on all parties. So I think we have to be respectful of all of the other burdens that are placed. I personally am comfortable with a week. That gives me a weekend to review it. Um, I think we have email communication throughout between us. So there, we know what's coming up. I would like to see more of that circling around so that nothing is, so that we're all aware. Yeah. I think that that is completely reasonable. Again, remembering that we have sunshine laws in place and discussion is held here, but information can be provided through email. I think that's completely reasonable. Um, I would just like to be respectful of well, Barb's time and and workload and and Jake's workload as well. I, I think this is something that we can discuss amongst ourselves and and you know, decide uh, what, what our policy will be. I think I think you know we've talked about shooting for Monday for the next few to get into a group and then backing it up. We can go from there and working on a on a system. So you you what. What we are saying is that we have a complete agenda with motions all published in packet form on Monday. I, at the on minimum, Mondays. yes. I Monday. would like it on Friday, but I know that this is this is a. I would like it on Thursday, giving me a full week to a process, week, week read, before, digest, but, plan. So you're saying a week before, yes. but Monday at the latest. Yes. Uh -huh. That's what I would like to start with personally, because I think this is going to require some maneuvering. For the administrative side of it to adjust their yeah. processes and adjust their financial reports and when they're pulling those and when their check cut dates are and, and all of that. It gives Sharon time to work her financial report. I, I'm under. agreeable to that. Okay. So starting with Monday and then moving it target goal of a week prior, a week prior. and see how that sits. I, I generally do not have the financial the week prior. Have. Well, but that's the point. Yeah. We need those. Exactly. Well, so I mean, that's going to have to be something. But, okay. But if closing is the thirty-first of May, okay, mm -hmm. I don't get the financials until a few days after that because Barbara, for her administrative mm -hmm. tasks, has things to do before she can send them to me. Just Understand my bank account. So, depends on where the meeting, the board meeting, falls in relationship to the end of the month. Sometimes it's the board meeting is sooner in the month. The well, soonest it's going to be is the 6th. No, the 7th. That's the soonest we're going to have a board meeting is the 7th. And I probably would not get financials until, well, they correct me if I'm wrong, the 2nd or 3rd. So I don't have that information until a couple, three days before the board meeting. Would it be appropriate for us to move forward with a tentative agenda and motions made on that Monday before and then be respectful of the uh, financials being available when they are available? And I, I don't. That, the financials I, are a standard part of the agenda. So if we're going to publish a standard agenda, the financials are item number they're already, they're always, uh, they're they're always item number six. Yeah, always. No, and I mean, that's, that's the standardized agenda.